The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades, and this country is not alone. The time has now come for us all to do more. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. Because the critical thing we must do to stop the disease spreading between households. It was surreal. It was an outer body experience moment. The initial response was shock. It was very confusing, something of course we never expected to happen. This can't really happen because it's so unprecedented. You just wouldn't expect something like that. It just took a while for it to sink in. There was a lot of fear, a lot of uh, unanswered questions. People didn't know, they didn't have the instructions, they didn't know what to follow. And that is where the fear came from. The Race Equality Network is an umbrella organisation based in Bradford that supports ethnic minority communities living in Bradford and District. We have recently been funded by Bradford Council to deliver the Covid Prevention Project. The aim of the project is to support communities with key information around Covid in lots of different languages and through different platforms such as social media, WhatsApp video messages and leaflets. We work in partnership with the Covid Response Hub to send our volunteers out with them to do warm-up engagement activities through door-to-door -door knocking to dispel myths and conspiracy theories around COVID-19. They are offered a home testing kit and are encouraged to take up testing as and when required. My name is Shadi Hussain, I'm one of the board members of the Bradford Foundation Trust. Um, during the uh, COVID pandemic, our organisation has been very active. Um, historically, we've always supported refugees and asylum seekers, so we played a big part in distributing food across the city, uh, helping with communications, translating messages, we obviously work closely with the Race Equality Network to reach um, minority communities and translate public health messages into um, other languages. My name is Shagufta and I work for QAD Foundation which stands for Quest for Economical Development. During the pandemic we've done lots of positive things for our local community which has been appreciated much to bring positivity during dark times in the COVID-19 pandemic. We've done a befriending project uh, where staff have been calling all our learners to make sure that how they're coping with COVID-19. We made this COVID-19 survival pack uh, which explains briefly what coronavirus is and preventions that they can do, steps they can do, a little bit about health, a few puzzles, um, a word search, just to keep positivity in their lives. We've been supporting the community with everything throughout this pandemic, from shopping, to the, shopping for the elderly. We are an educational charity so our focus is always education so we moved all our mentoring and tutoring and everything online including our women's group, men's group, We've got a very active Girls Got A Ride cycling group that wasn't able to meet but we've been able to meet remotely and do exercises at home. We went out into the community, uh, uh, into areas that are populated by the European Roma people. Um, we went out to the community to, get, to give the right information, keep the community up to date. For Muslim Women's Council, we've been lucky to be able to help as many people as we can from the community. We've been able to, through the helpline, distribute nearly 8,500 hot meals to individuals and families across the Bradford district through the helpline. We've got a COVID-19 helpline that we operate where we give the opportunity for the Roma people to, to ring us, ask any questions and that they've got about the COVID-19, about the vaccine, about self-isolation and uh, we do offer to, to book the tests on, on, uh, on the telephone as well. Because we sprung into action so quickly in the beginning of the year, last year, uh, with a lot, we've developed a lot of projects and help, which have helped engage with the communities um, and basically trying to help them out and especially 
the hard to reach communities, contacting people within the South Asian or the BAME community um, and making calls on a regular basis to find out if people 55 plus were actually okay in their households because of shielding. We're a mental health organisation supporting women, South Asian women, um, so it has been a really difficult time um, trying to arrange uh, virtual groups um, and virtual one-to-ones and then we noticed that there was um, a demand um, for food packages and hygiene packs um, especially for the vulnerable families so that was another um, kind of job that we had um, so contacting businesses and charities um, to get donations whether it were vouchers whether it was actual food donations and then getting them out there We've done some really positive stuff actually. Um, I've been really excited about the work that we've done in spite of everything, connecting with communities, working with some of those groups that were harder to reach and certainly connecting with the African Caribbean elders. That's been a really, really, really positive thing. And certainly with the Eastern European, particularly Roma communities as well. That's been really, really positive, making some really good links with those individuals and, and, and actually providing a really good support mechanism for people. That's been fantastic. Because the communities that we work with, uh, often uh, literacy is an issue, um, so we can't really talk about having information that's just internet based or using technology such as Zoom. What we've had to do is to quickly adapt to creating animated uh, videos, if you like, where there's an image, there's a video for people to look at, there's some text for those that can read, can read in their own language, not everybody can, uh, and so we've had audio over, uh, over the text as well, so you're actually getting a combination of uh, audio, um, text and an image. We are thankful to REN for their grant. Uh, we have opened a Zoom account and every week we have a program on Zoom which helps our members to join us uh, from home. Uh, they can virtually uh, see, visit our temple. They can also uh, 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 you know, talk with our priest. This is very, very helpful. And uh, uh, this is very good for their well-being, their spiritual and health. Initially, when the information was coming out from the government, it was all in English and the community was in really benefiting. They didn't know what social distancing and isolation really meant. So we produced, using local faces from the community, a video in Bangla. Uh, on how to isolate, on what to do, who to ring, where to get information from. Our achievements during lockdown would be that we kept our doors open throughout. Uh, we continued many of our services via Zoom. For example, our coffee morning, healthy eating, social club for the elderly were all provided via Zoom. Hi, we're Two T-Shirt Gang and we are a functional health, fitness and wellbeing organisation and our slogan is improvement not perfection. So the challenge for us for the last past year has been to keep our online work and keep our youth active into relation to the work that we've been delivering. Overall I really think it's been important that we keep our youth active, obviously in these prevalent times of Covid as we know how it affects everyone. Um, in terms of adversity, but um, we just have to try and remain positive and just keep on the straight and narrow and just, it is what it is for our situation and just keep moving with the times. Uh, I think one, one thing that we are proud of is uh, the people that were released from prison. Uh, we were able to help them, support them uh, and offer them guidance uh, during the difficult time. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, getting released from prison, there wasn't many uh, statutory organisations that were be able to support them and being in the heart of the community, we, we, we were able to support uh, these people uh, that were released from prison. We are also distributing some PPE kits which consist of uh, the hand sanitizer, wipes, uh, face masks and also we have been distributing leaflets uh, regarding information on COVID-19. This is quite helpful for them. NAFS provides a, a, a large a variety of classes, online classes, um, for the community basically. Anybody that can log on can, will log on and there is people to talk to that are providing an awful lot of assistance to families that really do um, need, need that assistance. They're, um, and it's, it's with, with things that actually really do count as important factors for them such as, such as the hot meals, um, they're providing over 150 per day 
So for, to be able to provide meals like that is wonderful. Women's Zone has been, it's obviously been a difficult year for everyone, but Women's Zone has been really uh, fluid in terms of like how we've, uh, I suppose, readjusted to what the communities really need at the moment. So one of those things is becoming a food and clothing bank. Um, whereas before we had like the women's gym and other things going on at the centre which we had to stop doing. Um, so yeah, that's been really good because at least we're actually listening to the community and seeing what they actually need. We've been helping and supporting families with food parcels, um, other crisis um, support such as um, helping women overcome some of the DV issues, uh, ensuring that they got the specialist and the, the, um, the, the help that they, they needed. And also with a lot of vulnerable families because lots of people lost their jobs, lost their income and they were struggling financially so we provided food parcels for the families as well as um, lots of uh, engagement through conversations and also working with other organisations and ensuring that there was a wraparound service for those families and ensuring that they got the right support. I think one of the greatest things to teach at Gang has done over this period is um, keeping the youth engaged um, and offering a well needed service throughout COVID-19. Um, our youth have shown much resilience to stick with us online throughout lockdowns and when lockdown got lifted to be back with us and their engagement and entertainment has just been excellent so I would just like to shout out our youth as well for making us look good yeah, <laughs> let's just say and um, just you know investing in themselves as well so it was really good to see. My name is Nigel Guy, I'm from Windrush Generations UK. We're based in Bradford, but we're on a national and international context. What we've been doing over the last year has been providing provisions and services to people who are locked in, isolated and vulnerable, elders and families. And what we've been doing, we've brought a hope of light to people who have been struggling in the period of coronavirus and the pandemic. And um, we've been an organisation of 25 plus volunteers who are weekly helping people to um, feel the positivity and that there's hope in the country, in Bradford, for us to actually do better things. So firstly, we, uh, we open a telephone helpline for Arabic to allow people in Arabic community understand what the government guidelines is. There was a lot of fake news out there, you know, on social media, and it was impacting the thought process of a lot of people within the community. So we took a stand and it was basically getting the correct information out there so, and had doorstep conversations trying to get people tested and asking them as to why um, they were not getting tested or why did they not want the vaccine. So what we wanted to do was give them in, enough information that they could make an informed choice. We provided weekly COVID messages through, through social media and we closely work with REN. And we continue to offer food passes to school children and to vulnerable uh, by, use, by us going to them rather than the service users coming to us. We distribute some uh, uh, face masks and uh, hand sanitizer to all Arab community and we continue doing this. COVID has been challenging for our whole community and for the Sangha Centre to keep running and maintaining our services and the biggest lesson that we've learned is that you have to work together, you have to pull together and you have to look out for each other and that's the way you will get through this and I think it's been admirable the way our community has done that. Well what I'm looking forward to in for moving forward post um, Covid is for us to see family. People have been in isolation, so the opportunity to pull people together in some arenas, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be really exciting for us because we'll be able to reopen the women's gym and we've got a new play gym that we've got in, in partnership with Bet Better Start Bradford. Uh, we do want to host some cultural events. Uh, we've got some really good traditions that we would like to share with the wider community. Well, that face-to-face -face and bringing it back home will be uh, really good for the women, I think, and the well-being. I mean, we're really looking forward to seeing our service users again. Um, and even our service users, they want to see us. Obviously, we are here 
serve the community and if we can't serve the community then we need to be able to find a way that we can reach them. They're not hard to reach, it's just finding a way of getting to them basically. Um, the hopes for the future is to continue our work that we're doing, um, obviously with the youth and our clients etc, but to keep on building on top of what we've already got in place. The work that has started uh, with all the organisations that are working together in partnership uh, and the relationships that have been forged, I think we need to continue working with those organisations uh, and not work in silence once all this pandemic is over. I think people are looking forward to uh, seeing their families and friends. On a personal level, I'm looking forward to being able to you know, access some of the um, live events that we used to put on, like you know, the Black Scientist Fair, British Science Week, things like that. The thing that I'm most looking forward to is just being able to see everybody again face to face. I think that's through work and personally. On a personal level, um, I think friends know that I've been sort of um, trying to get through a PhD. I'm in my last stages of getting it written up. I just can't wait to get that done, so that'll hopefully be this summer. Moving forward, we're very optimistic about the future and we're going to beat this. Thank you.